welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a home DIY project using the Cricut machine. I'm going to show you guys how to make this beautiful window cling you can use on your front door, you can use on any window that you want. Uh, it is so easy to make. I'm going to show you guys how to do it from design space all the way to putting it onto the window. So if you guys are interested and you want to make this for your front door, then stay tuned. Starting with materials, we're going to need a Cricut cutting mat. I'm using the 12 by 24 so I can cut more at once. Next, you're going to need the window cling that makes the frosted glass look by Cricut. Measure your door and see how much you need. For me, I needed two rolls. Next, you just need something to cut the roll to size. You can use scissors or you can use a paper cutting board, which I'm using that I got from my Cricut tool set. Next, we're just going to need a weeding tool, which I also got from my tool set as well. And last but not least, I just need my measuring tape so I can measure where I'm going to put the window clings on. To get started, we're going to go ahead and measure off what is the size of the area we're going to put the window cling on. For me, I measured that it is 11 inches and then going across, it is 6 inches. Moving on to design space, you can see this is what the finished look is going to look like. I'm going to go ahead and start over just to show you guys step by step how to make this file. So starting with a new file, we're going to go ahead and put a square over the, from the shapes. And then we're going to resize this to the same size as each window frame. So like I said earlier, we measured this by 11 and 6 inches. So if we click on the top where the sizing is, we just have to change those numbers to 11 inches and 6 inches. So you can see that is the size that we need it to be on a final. I'm going to go ahead and change the color for this so that way it's just a little bit more appealing to look at and it kind of reminds me more of a window cling I guess. So I change this to like a nice light gray. To create the frame I'm going to first copy and paste this. You can also click the duplicate button on the top right hand side of the layers bar. Next I'm going to select both images to place them directly on top of each other by centering them. And then selecting just the top layer, I'm going to go ahead and resize this so that way I have a smaller box on top of the bigger box. So then you're going to go ahead and center both boxes and it should reveal the shape of the frame. You can always adjust it bigger or smaller however you like. I kind of like the way it looks, so I'm just going to keep it just as is. Before we slice this to create the frame, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the larger box as the base for creating the pattern side of the cling. And I'm going to go ahead and place it on the side. And if you click the little eye next to that layer, it's going to hide it. Now, since we have that layer prepared, we can select both boxes and then slice it. Once it's sliced, you can go ahead and start removing certain layers and deleting it. So this is the middle piece. I'm going to delete that. This is the base piece, I'm going to delete that and then that just leaves me with just that framing that I needed it. Now if you turn that base piece back on, you can see that you've created like a frame. So you have your back side and then you also have the front side which is the framing that goes around it. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide that frame again so we can make that base with the pattern on it. I'm going to go to images over here. And if you have Cricut access, you will be able to get access into these patterns I'm using. I'm going to go to cartridges and I'm going to search for edge to edge. I'm using the first edge to edge so it doesn't have a number. You have edge to edge 2 and then you have just edge to edge. So edge to edge is the one that I'm using. The pattern I'm using is going to be this one right over here. So we're going to select that one and then insert it onto the canvas. So now that you see the pattern on there, it's pretty small. You can choose for the pattern to be very intricate if you like. However, I kind of wanted something a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll this screen all the way down so I just see the corner of that image on the upper left hand side and I'm going to keep dragging it to make it bigger. Now that I have this piece on top, you can kind of see how the pattern is going to lay on top of that base box. What you can do is you can actually place this layer in between the frame and the back box. So you can really see what the full finished product is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and 
reorganize those layers right there. Now that you can really see what it's going to look like, you can kind of move it around to figure out where you want it to be on the finished product. Once you're done with this part, you can go ahead and hide that first top frame so that way it's just the bottom two layers showing. Then you're going to go ahead and select both layers and then you're going to slice it. Now that it's sliced, you'll see all the different pieces. I'm going to delete the outside piece first and I'm going to start moving them out. So this piece I'm going to delete and then I'm going to keep this piece and then delete the other one which is the base. Now that we have the two pieces that we need to create the actual final result, I'm going to go ahead and turn that frame back on and I'm going to place them directly on top of each other by centering them vertically and horizontally. And then now the last piece we have to do is just weld it together and that is our finished cut piece. Now to prepare the file for the cutting mat, I'm going to go ahead and click on make it. Now I think I might be able to fit four pieces on here, so I'm going to change this number to four, so that way it'll duplicate my pieces four times. And then I'm going to change this mat to my larger mat at 12 by 24. You can see that it's split it into two mats, and it has all of them standing portrait size. I'm going to go ahead and rotate all of these, because I think I can probably fit way more with this sideways than with it standing upwards and I'm wasting paper. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. Now just a little trick for you guys, when you're rotating this, it's so hard to get it directly 90 degree angle. If you actually press down the shift button, it'll actually stop it at the 90 degree angle turn for you. And then you can see that since I have two mats, if you click on the second mat and then click on the design, on the top left hand corner there's three dots. Click on that button and then you can start moving it into another mat. You just click on the first mat, click insert, and then it'll move that piece to the first mat for you. I'm going to move everything to the first mat because I really don't want to use two mats. I want to have everything fit into one mat. Next, I'm going to go ahead and rotate these two pieces. So you can see here, it's not going to fit all four pieces, but it does give me an idea of how much more of the paper I would cut if I want to use the same piece. I am going to use the same piece because I don't really feel like cutting two pieces separately. I just think it saves more material when I do this. So I can see it's going to be about an inch and a half or so extra that I'm going to have dangling off the board. Since it doesn't fit, just click on the three dots and click hide so we don't have to start all over again. Now to cut the paper and prep the mat for this project, I'm going to go ahead and use my Cricut cutting board so that way I can cut everything to size in a straight line. This actually fits perfectly into the board so I actually am thinking that I'm probably going to use this to cut all of the mats really and stop using scissors. That way I can really get a nice straight line. Now we can go ahead and place our window cling paper onto our mat. I usually like to position it a little tiny bit, maybe like two millimeters below the line because the machine does cut a little bit below it just to not waste material. Make sure you push out all the bubbles in there so it doesn't interfere with the blade as it's cutting the material. And don't forget that there is supposed to be an edge dangling at the end. Now to load this onto the machine, make sure you have the settings to custom and then change it to window cling paper on your laptop, your tablet, or your phone. And then we're going to go ahead and load the mat onto the machine and start. You can see right here that now that it's done, it actually leaves you more than enough space to do one more. So what we're going to do is we're going to unload this from the machine. We're going to remove the paper from the mat and then we're going to flip it over and place it back on the mat with this side on top. Now that all the cutting is done, we're just going to go ahead and remove all the pieces that we don't need from the board. And it should look like this when it is all done. You should be able to peel it right off and be able to go ahead and put it onto the window directly. Last but not least, we just have to place all of these onto the window directly and our project is all done. 
Keep in mind, if you do have any trouble adhering this onto the window, you can also add a little bit of moisture on there for it to help cling onto the window a little bit better. So that concludes my video. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a nice thumbs up. It does let me know what type of content you guys enjoy and where I should focus my videos on. Other than that, if you would like to join the family, be sure to click that subscribe button. Also follow me on Instagram at Norris Chan. That is N-O-R-R-I-S-C-H-A-N. Other than that, thanks for watching. Bye.